Hey students, today we're going to talk about combining functions with the four basic operations. Let's look at this example in this definition. If you want to take the sum of two functions, you will notice the notation is given and it shows you what to do. You add the two functions. In plain English, you will add like terms. If you want to subtract two functions, then you need to make sure and apply the subtraction or the negative sign to the second function. And then you will also combine like terms after applying that negative sign. If you are asked to multiply two functions, then you will use the distributive property or the FOIL method to multiply the terms given. And last but not least, if you are asked to set up a rational or a ratio of two functions, that's simply what you do. You put one function in the numerator and one function in the denominator. Normally, there's nothing more to simplify. Here's an example. We're given two functions, function f and function g. First, let's look at adding. I will take function f, which is 6 minus x squared, and I will add that to function g, which is x squared plus 2x minus 24. All I have to do or to, would be to add the like terms. Notice first, I have a negative x squared and a positive x squared. When I combine those, they cancel and give me zero. Then I also have a positive 6 and a negative 24. Positive 6 and negative 24 would give me negative 18. Then, last but not least, I have a single term of 2x, so that would be plus 2x. My answer, negative 18 plus 2x. Now, let's look at the same two functions, but this time, let's go ahead that we're done with addition, let's subtract them. So I take the first function, I normally use these parentheses to help me, and then I take the second function. With subtraction, it is important that you apply this negative sign. This negative sign is like an understood negative one that distributes. So that would be negative x squared, negative two x, and positive 24. It will change the signs of the terms in the second function. However, the first function remains unchanged. Now let's combine like terms. Negative x squared plus negative x squared is negative 2x squared. Then I have this negative 2x term. Then I have the 6 and a positive 24. Add those and you get 30. This would be my final answer. There are no other like terms to combine. Now, again, we've done the addition, we've done the subtraction, we're being asked to multiply. So I will take the f function, which is six minus x squared, and I will multiply it times the g function, which is x squared plus two x minus 24. Earlier, I said we use the distributive property. So let's do that. Let's take the six and distribute it first. Six times x squared is really six x squared. Six times two x is really 12 x. I will put a positive there. Six times negative 24 I had a problem with my sign, is negative 144, and we have distributed everything in the second equation, second function, with the 6. Now I'll go back and I will pick up with the negative x squared and distribute that. Negative x squared times positive x squared is negative x to the fourth negative x squared times positive 2x 
is a negative 2x to the third. Remember to add the exponents. And negative x squared times negative 24 is positive 24x squared. Now let me combine any like terms and put it in descending order. That would be a negative x to the fourth, done. Negative 2x to the third, done. I can combine the 6x squared and the 24x squared to get 30x squared, done. Uh, then I also have 12x, done, and negative 144. All of this would be my final answer. Last, but certainly not least, we will now set up a fraction. We have done the addition, subtraction, and the multiplication. By the way, a note about the domain of each of those, all of the three prior operations, the domain would have been negative infinity to positive infinity because none of the prior examples used a fraction or a square root. However, here we are setting up a fraction. The f of x will be placed on top of the fraction. The g of x function will be placed on the bottom of the fraction. And that is my final answer. There's nothing to work out or simplify. Now you do need to examine the domain of the denominator. Now to get the domain, we want to make sure that we don't have a zero denominator. So we want to avoid a zero denominator. Let me go ahead and solve this. Where would x squared plus 2x minus 24 even equal to zero? Let me solve that. I would solve that by factoring so that'd be x plus 6, x minus 4. And I can quickly see that a negative 6 and a positive 4 would indeed result in 0. So on the number line, I want to avoid negative 6. I want to jump over it. And I want to avoid positive 4. Any other number on the number line can be part of the domain of this function, of this newly created fractional function. So that domain would be negative infinity comma negative six union, negative six comma four union, four comma infinity. Hope this has helped you see how to combine functions using the four basic operations.